Um, so first of all, I want to thank uh, Lola, Juan and Javi for inviting me once again to uh, this workshop. And uh, thank you for your warm hospitality, which uh, may be a surprise for those who are coming here for the first time, but not to me, <laughs> because I have enjoyed it many, many times. So thank you. Um, well, this is, as you can see here, a joint work with uh, Nicolas uh, Hatzisabas from the University of the Aegean and uh, with uh, Flavia Jacinto, who is sitting there. She's from uh, Universidade Federal do Amazonas in Brazil, but she has uh, stayed at uh, my department for over one year. And uh, I want to tell the story of this, uh, of this work. In my opinion, uh, Nicolas is the main contributor to the theory of uh, monotone bifunctions and he's a good friend of mine and also a co-author of other papers. And, uh, well, I met him at several uh, conferences where he, he gave a talk on this topic. And since he knows I'm interested also in monotone operators, he uh, often invited me to join him in this research. But he said, I uh, don't have the feeling I, I really understand by functions. And it was only when Flavia came to Barcelona, uh, so after discussing with her, uh, then I understood. <laughs> and then I uh, wrote uh, Nicholas and said, now I am ready to accept your invitation. <laughs> okay, so you see, Flavia played a very crucial role, more than the one corresponding to a, an ordinary co-author in this, uh, in this uh, paper. Okay, so, um, how does it work? Here. So, uh, my talk, uh, first I will give the basic definitions, then some preliminary results which aim at clarifying the, the relations between monotone bifunctions and monotone operators. And, and then at the end I will present the main results which are the characterizations of um, maximal monotonicity for bifunctions which is uh, in the title of the presentation. So, everything will be in the context of reflexive Banach spaces. We need this for the characterization. The, the, the preliminary results would uh, work in, in arbitrary Banach spaces, but for the characterizations we, ne we need reflexivity. So, this is uh, the notation, X star will denote the dual, this is the duality pairing, and this is the, um, uh, the object under study by functions simply functions of two variables, both in X, the Banach space. Where do these B functions arise? They arise in the, cost, in the context of so-called equilibrium problems. Let me briefly recall you what an equilibrium uh, problem is. So you have a by function like this and the equilibrium problem as introduced by Bloom and Edley in 1994, in a journal you may have uh, never heard, uh, the mathematics student, an Indian journal which is really unknown, but if you look at their paper there, I didn't look at it uh, recently in MathSciNet, but uh, the last time I looked at it, maybe one, two years ago, it had approximately 200 citations. Okay, so it's, uh, okay, so the equilibrium problem is finding X bar, find x bar in x or in some convex subset of x such that f of x bar y is greater than or equal to zero for every y. So it has a very easy formulation. But uh, the reason for this uh, definition is that uh, Many problems can be uh, stated under this format. Optimization problems, variational inequalities, uh, fixed points, subtle point problems, Nash equilibria, and maybe others, I don't remember now. Okay, so this is where by functions uh, appear. Uh, we call the domain of the function the set you see here, the set of points such that when you fix the first variable then it's, it does not take the value minus infinity. And uh, we have a notion of monotonicity for by functions, which you can see here. The most standard definition is this one. 
but okay, we prefer this formulation, which of course is equivalent when we are in the domain, mm -hmm. simply because we want to avoid uh, dealing with plus infinity plus minus infinity. Th we don't need any convention if we write this condition in this way. Why does one call this property monotonicity? Because one does not see, in principle, any, any monotonicity here. My interpretation is that, okay, consider, a, to simplify, a single value, monotone operator. Uh, monotonicity here means that uh, x minus y times tx minus ty is greater than or equal to zero for every xy in x, okay? And this condition can be written equivalently as t, uh, sorry, um, um, y minus x tx plus x minus y ty less than or equal to zero. If you call this function f of xy, then this would be f of yx, and here you have the monotonicity condition. So it comes from the relationship between monotone operators and, and, and wave functions. Um, well, and as I said, the preliminary results uh, aim at clarifying the relationship between uh, operators and by functions. So, uh, for first of all, okay, we uh, associate to a by function an operator, which we define in the following way. For instance, suppose we are dealing with the subdifferential operator of a, uh, or okay, no, here we start with a by function. So, suppose this by function is the directional derivative in the following sense of a convex function. So f of xy is the di directional derivative of f, a convex function, at x in the direction y minus x. Okay? Then wh what we are defining uh, here is the subdifferential. Okay? Then uh, we have these relations between the domain of the operator and the by function that induces it. We also have that uh, this operator has closed convex images, and if the by function is monotone in that sense, then the operator is also monotone. This is easy to check. Uh, we say, one says that a uh, by function is uh, maximal monotone if the associated operator is maximal monotone. So it's an indirect definition. We define maximality of a by function through maximality of the associated operator. Um, now, we proceed in the opposite direction. Given an operator, we associate to it a by function in this way. Um, now, if t is the subdifferential operator of a convex function, what, are, what we are defining here essentially is the directional derivative, just to motivate these definitions. Properties of um, the by function induced by a monotone operator. When you make a translation like this in the second argument using x, this, the same uh, variable as in the first component, then this function belongs to s of x, which is the set of functions defined here, the sublinear functions. The set of lower semi-continuous sublinear functions vanishing at zero together with the constant uh, minus infinity. Uh, is the only function in the set which is allowed to take the value minus infinity. Okay. This by function has exactly the same domain as the operator that induces it. Um, we also have that uh, the operator is monotone if and only if the associated by function is uh, monotone. Um, here we need to introduce some notations. We will consider the set of by functions with this sublinearity property in the second argument. Uh, I will call these by functions good by functions to simplify. Okay? Good by functions. 
then uh, the by function induced by an operator is always good. Um, we also need to consider this class of by functions, functions which are not necessarily good, a little less than good because they are convex and lower semi-continuous in the second argument, here we impose more, but they are also monotone. And this is the last notation I am introducing here, is the set of monotone operators with convex closed images. Okay, and uh, in this long list of definitions I am here recalling the notion of the Fitzpatrick function of an operator. You can see the definition here, this is always a convex function, also lower semi-continuous and it represents the operator assuming the T is monotone and maximal monotone, it always represents the, the operator in a um, very useful way. I mean, it contains the whole information on the operator. If you give me the Fitzpatrick function of a maximal monotone operator, I can recover the operator from the knowledge of this uh, function. There are other representations of um, maximal monotone operators or of other monotone operators which are not necessarily maximal in general but historically this was the first introduced by Fitzpatrick a long time ago in, in, in a paper published in 1988 but which was unknown for a long time because it was published in the proceedings of some Australian workshop and it was unknown until Michelle and I re rediscovered it uh, many years later. Um, and now we also introduce, well we don't introduce, it was introduced by Nicholas in a previous paper, the notion of the Fitzpatrick transform of a by function which is as follows. We uh, fix the second variable, I mean it's, I'm defining the uh, transform at x x star, then we first fix x in the second argument. So the function becomes a function only on, on the first variable. Change the sign and take conjugate at x star. So this appears to be a, a bit arbitrary uh, definition and one does not see the relation with the other uh, definition of the Fitzpatrick function of a monotone operator, but if you make some computations you will see that if our by function is good, then the, its Fitzpatrick transform coincides with the Fitzpatrick uh, function of the associated operator. So this justifies this definition. Okay. Well, so enough definitions, now uh, first basic results to clarify the relationship between by functions and operators. First some notation, uh, this uh, denotes the set of closed convex sets in the dual the, I recall this is the set of um, lower semi-continuous sublinear functions vanishing at zero together with the constant minus infinity and uh, then I am just here recalling uh, the classical relationship, well-known relationship between closed convex sets and support functions. Uh, to a closed convex set here we associate its support function and we proceed in the opposite direction, given a sublinear function we associate a closed convex set, this is very well known. Uh, here we are interchanging the roles of x and x star because we need to deal with uh, convex sets in the dual space, but there is no, in fact, uh, no real change because our space is reflexive. And then this theorem is simply recalling the well-known Minkowski or Minkowski Minkowski Hormander uh, duality between closed convex sets and uh, support uh, and sublinear functions. Okay. Well, then um, I am recalling here the notation I introduced before good by functions, uh, monotone by functions which are not good but good enough and monotone operators with uh, closed convex images. 
and uh, as an um, easy translation of Minkowski duality into this context, uh, together with mono monotonistic considerations, we have that to abai functions which is good and monotone, we associate uh, an operator which is monotone and with closed convex images. In the opposite direction, to a monotone operator with closed convex images, we associate a by function which is good in monotone. And we have that these mappings are bijections and inverse to each other. This is what is said here. We start with an operator, we associate a by function, and to this by function, an operator. And we recover the initial operator, assuming that the operator was. Uh, monotone and had closed convex images. Similarly, we start with a by function which is good and monotone. We associate to it an operator and then we consider the by function induced by this operator. We recover the initial by function. Does it work? Okay. Now, um, we consider here the classical definition of maximality in the point-wise sense, um, in the set of good monotone bifunctions. This is uh, nothing new. We say that it is uh, point-wise maximal if the only uh, bifunction in the same set, which is larger at every point, is this, is, is this function. So it's not strictly larger, let us say. Okay. And uh, we can compare this definition of maximality with the maximality for bifunctions, which is classically used, defined through maximality of the induced operator, and we can see that it is the same, exactly the same, assuming that the bifunction is good and monotone. Now it's time to, to state the main results. Um, which are characterizations of uh, maximality for bifunctions. So, we start with a bifunction which is not good necessarily, but it's monotone. Okay, monotone and convex and lower semi-continuous in its second variable, but we are not imposing any uh, positive homogeneity condition. So our statements will uh, deal with one by function having these properties. Then we have four equivalent statements. First, f is a maximal monotone by function in the sense that the induced operator is maximal monotone. Second, the the by function induced by the operator induced by this by function is maximal monotone. This is not the same statement because GAF is not F necessarily because we had this equality only when F was good and this is not assumed to be good. Okay. Then the third statement is that for every maximal monotone by function in the set of good by functions, which has a finite valued Fitzpatrick transform, there is a point depending on the by function satisfying this inequality for every y. That is to say, if we consider this equilibrium problem but perturbed by h, okay? So f plus h is a new bifunction. So we are perturbing our bifunction, which we only know to be monotone, by means of this h, of which we know it's maximal monotone, and has, that's important, a finite valued Fitzpatrick transform. So every such perturbation has the equilibrium problem induced by such perturbation always has a solution. And the fourth statement um, doesn't consider every perturbation of this type, but just one 
with a good uh, monotone, uh, sorry, with a good wave function which does not need to be monotone and of course not maximal of any kind of maximality and there is a special point P with the following properties first when you fix the first argument at P then this function is affine in its second variable which is uh, a stronger condition than what we are assuming here. We are assuming this property of being uh, convex and, and lower semi-continuous and positively homogeneous in the second argument. So here we impose it to be affine. Second, this point, this particular point, is strictly monotonically related by means of H with every other uh, point in the space. And for every point in the Cartesian product of the space with its dual, there exists a point x tilde depending on, on the pair, such that, okay, this is also a, a perturbation of the initial equilibrium problem. Okay, f plus this perturbation. So this perturbed equilibrium problem also has a solution x tilde. The four statements are equivalent. So this is a characterization of maximal monotonicity for by functions which, for which we require the space to be reflexive. And uh, we also have a new characterization of maximality for operators. So consider a monotone operator A we are going to characterize its maximality and be a maximal monotone operator with a finite valued Fitzpatrick function. Then consider the following statements. First, A is maximal, maximal monotone. Second, if, uh, when you add A to every translation of B, I mean translation here means that we are translating its argument by means of an arbitrary x. Then this means that the sum is surjective. This is the range of the operator. Okay? So the third statement is that this operator equation, zero belongs to this, has a solution x prime for every x. x is given, but arbitrary, you fix x, and then you solve this equation for x prime. So it always has a solution. We are, this is the third statement. Then one has one in place two, two in place three. And if moreover, this operator B, on top of being maximal monotone and having a finite valued Fitzpatrick function, is single valued and strictly monotone, then the three statements are equivalent. This is uh, related to um, Rockefeller's surjectivity theorem. But in that theorem uh, he is using the duality mapping uh, J. Here we use an arbitrary monotone operator but this is more general because the duality mapping has is, is, is maximal monotone, that's well known, it's the sub-differential of a convex function, one half times the square of the norm. But also it has a finite valued Fitzpatrick function. How do we know it? Because uh, one convex representation is the Fenchel representation, the function plus its conjugate. And the function is the one half the square of the norm, and the conjugate is also one half the square of the norm, so it is finite. And it is also known, since Fitzpatrick's paper, that the Fitzpatrick representation is the smallest convex representation. So, since the Fenchel representation doesn't take the value plus infinity, so the uh, Fitzpatrick function also doesn't take that value. Only uh, needs single-valuedness for the equivalence.
for the Congress. Thank you. And so the last result will be a consequence of this theorem for bifunctions. Namely, suppose we have a monotone bifunction, uh, which is not necessarily good, but it's context and lower city continues in its second variable. And consider a strictly monotone and maximal monotone operator with a finite value of its public function. Then, the by function is maximal monotone if and only if we have this property. For every point, there is a positive number such that for this pair, there is a point satisfying this condition. Again, this is telling us that some perturbed equilibrium problem has a solution. And this result uh, generalizes a result by Nicolas Achisalas, our author, in which he was considering here the, the duality matrix instead of P. Okay? So, in fact, you, only, you, you can work with an arbitrary uh, monotone operator as long as it has a finite value which is public function. The, the um, quality mapping is just an instance of such kind of operators. I will conclude by uh, giving few references. Uh, in this one, there are some generalizations of Rockefeller's theorem, as the title indicates, which we have used to produce our results. And as I said, here is in the proof of this theorem where uh, reflexivity plays a role. Uh, by the way, if you're interested in this paper, be careful. Because there is a result not used in this paper, which is wrong. But thanks to this wrong result, I have now written another paper with uh, Marco Rocco, in which uh, we correct that result, in that wrong result, and we made other uh, extensions. Yeah, <laughs> it was not that done on purpose. <laughs> uh, and, uh, so, if you are interested, I can send you this paper and the paper in which the rectification, but don't look just at this paper, please. And here you have two of the main papers of Nicholas with Iranian authors. Uh, one of them was his PhD student in, in the University of the Aegean. Uh, one of the, his main works in a paper journal, as you see, uh, many, uh, um, uh, his main works on maximal uh, monotonicity of by functions, and this one is where he introduced the Fitzpatrick transform. So, and that's all. Thank you very much.